So 9.3 is a little bit of a break from solving um, quadratics. We're going to work on a tool that we will use later in the chapter for solving quadratics. We're going to work on rewriting radical expressions for a little bit. A radical expression is one that involves a square root sign, like the square root of 4. Um, what it means is if you had an area with a, a square with an area of 1, a side length of a square with an area of 1 would be 1. It's the number that multiplies times itself to give you 1. It's always the positive number that multiplies to give you 1. So this diagram shows a square with an area of 4. So the side length of that square would be 2. That's why the square root of 4 is 2. So for some numbers, the square root turns out to be a really nice number. If I want to find the side length of a square with an area of 49, the square root of 49 is a nice number, 7. So sometimes it works out to be a whole number. Sometimes, though, a square root doesn't work out to be a whole number. Like the si if this area is 20, the side length won't be a nice whole number. Um, it will be, and what you're going to be able to do is estimate about how big the square root of 20 would be. And so thinking about numbers that do have nice square roots, like 16 and 25, I know that 20 is going to be somewhere between 4 and 5. I'm just guessing about 4.3, but that's totally a guess. Your responsibility will be able to get between which two whole numbers the square root would be. So it would be between 4 and 5. I don't exactly know what the decimal is. I could find it out on a calculator, though. There are buttons for square roots on calculators. What we're going to be doing as well is estimating square roots. We're going to be rewriting them in different ways. And first, I want to show you a visual. You can see in this diagram that 16, a square with an area of 16 has a side length of the square root of 16. So that's in red here. That's the side length is the square root of 16. Then there are two squares with area of 4. And what you can see is that they, if you take those two squares, their side lengths are the same size as the square root of 16. Squares are not the same size, but the side lengths add up to 16. So usually that means that we can write the square root of 16 as 2 times the square root of 4. Maybe we can write 16 as the square root of 4 times 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. And then we can separate those square roots. And because at multiplication you can separate your square roots, um, and the square root of 4 we know is 2, so one way to rewrite 16 is 2 times the square root of 4. Of course, you guys all realize that another way to write the square root of 16 is as 4. And you could even see that in that first picture, right? So in this first picture here, the square root of 16 is 4. I can count the four boxes. That's one way to write it. But uh, we're, we're playing with other ways of writing that expression. So we talked about how the square root of 20 is not a nice number, but what's another way to write the square root of 20? And the way I would do that is kind of similar to what we did when we were um, finding greatest common factor. We look at 20 and we know that 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10. It's not the only way to break up 20, but 2 is prime. 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. So 20, if I want to write that as a square root, is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 5. 2 times 2 is 4, so 20 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. We can do the square root of 4, that's 2. We can't do the square root of 5, so we can just write that as the square root of 5. That means that 2 times the square root of 5 is going to be the same thing as 20. It's another way of writing that 20. Um, one of the things you'll be asked to do on homework is comparing radical expressions, comparing um, are they the same or are they not the same. Um, I hope you know that 36 is the same thing as um, 6 times 6. 
So the square root of 36 would be 6. Um, 3 times the square root of 6 is not equal to 6. So that's the comparison. They're not equal. Um, which one's bigger? Um, well, the square root of 6 is between 2 and 3. So 3 times a number a little bit bigger than 2 is going to be bigger. So this number is bigger than 2. So 6 is 3 times 2. Oops. 6 is 3 times 2. This thing is 3 times a number bigger than 2. So we know that 6 is smaller than 3 root 6. It's not equal to 3 root 6, and it's actually smaller than 3 root 6. Um, I'll give you a minute to try to rewrite um, number 2, see if there's a way that you can think your way through which one of those is larger. Please pause the video, return after you've thought about the problem. Okay. Um, if I want to break up 72, 72 is the same thing as 8 times 9. 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. And 9 is the same thing as 3 times 3. So if I'm going to break up 72, I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. That's the square root of 72. I can rewrite that as the square root of 4 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. I had three twos, so two of them made 4, which has a nice square root, and then one more doesn't have a nice square root. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 2 is just square root of 2. So 2 times 3 is 6. Square root of 3. Okay. Oh, no, square root, not square root of 3. Why am I writing 3? Square root of 2. So square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 2 is still square root of 2. So it turns out that 6 root 2 and the square root of 72 are the same thing. So 6 root 2 is equal to square root of 72. I was able to write square root of 72 as 6 root 2. That means they're equal. You're also going to be asked to write equivalent expressions for radicals. So if I'm doing the square root of 63, I'm going to make a tree for 63. 63 is 7 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. So if I write the square root of 63, it would be 3 times 3 times 7. So square root of 9 times square root of 7, which is 3 times square root of 7. So 3 root 7 is equivalent to the square root of 63. We have a preference in math for not having any perfect squares left inside of our number. So 7 is a number that doesn't have any perfect squares in it, whereas 63 has a 9 in it, which is a perfect square. So again, I want you to pause the video and try these two so that you know that you know what you're doing. You want to write an equivalent expression for them. So make your trees and break it up. So I'll give you a moment to pause the video. When you're done, go ahead and restart the video and Watch my solution. So 44, if I break that up, is 4 times 11. 4 is 2 times 2. So 44 is square root of 2 times 2 times 11, or the square root of 4 times the square root of 11, or 2 root 11. So that's an equivalent expression to the square root 44. 27, if I break that up, would be 3 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. So we have 3 times the square root of 3 times 3 times 3, which is 3 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. 
9 has a nice root, so we have 3 times 3 times the square root of 3, or 9 times the square root of 3. And we can also do this same process with variables. I'm going to show you one example of this, but it's not going to be emphasized on tonight's homework. Um, 63, um, we can break up as um, 7 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. So I can rewrite this as 7 times 3 times 3, which is a perfect square. It's 9. X to the ninth, I can write as X times X times X nine times, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Each pair of these X's is also a perfect square. So if I rewrite this a little bit, I have square root of seven times square root of nine times square root of X squared for this one, times square root of x squared, times square root of x squared, times square root of x squared, times, I have one left over x, so square root of x. These are all my perfect squares that I can take the root of, so I have 9 times x times x times x, so the square root of x squared would be x, 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 so I have 3x to the fourth, and then the x and the 7, I can't take the square root of, so I write 7x inside of there. And it's no more difficult with variables. Um, it just means that you have to think about what a perfect square means. Um, here's kind of a summary. Um, when you have a square root, and you, you, can re, you can separate it into two roots and write that as a product, which allows us to break up our number and then write it as separate roots and break up our, um, our number. Um, you can also, if you have um, square root of 3 times square root of 6, you can combine that as one square root. That's another tool. Um, and we can do the same thing with variables that we do with numbers. <laughs>